So why am I standing here in front of a turbocharged LS with a bottle of CO2? Well, as you know, CO2 is cold. How cold? How about negative 120 degrees? So we wanted to see if we could run this through this to cool this. In this video, we installed our 4.8 liter up on the dyno. We equipped it with a Borg Warner S480 turbo and a Pro Charger air to water intercooler. Now we ran ambient dyno water through the core and monitor the charge temperature at a variety of different boost levels. We wanted to find out if we could run CO2 through the same core and lower the charge temperatures even more. I mean, it's negative 120 degrees. Is there any way we can get the charge temperature down to zero? Let's get things started. We have our naturally aspirated 4.8 liter up on the dyno before I run any turbo stuff. I like to run the thing NA, kind of see what the difference is offered by the boost. This was the same 4.8 liter that we ran the Magnuson or the uh, M90 supercharger with. So it still had the high RAM in it. It was a 4.8 with JE Forge pistons. It had Gen 4 rod 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade and a Brian Tooley Racing torque cam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the specs up there because I didn't supply that last time when we did the, all the M90 stuff. So here are the specs. Take a look at those. It's a pretty mild cam. It's designed for a torque application, so, but it works really well. As it turned out, it worked as a pretty good uh, turbo cam too. So I may do a video on that by itself because it, that's kind of cool. We also had the high RAM was still left over. Again, not ideal for the 4.8, but it worked for what we were doing. Our turbo kit consisted of truck manifolds, face forward, a custom Y pipe with a pair of turbo smart wastegates, and we had a Borg Warner S480 turbo feeding a Pro Charger air water intercooler. And as I said previously, we had we started out with dyno water just running through the core. So all that worked out. So this is our naturally aspirated motor. It made 400 and, or 400, I wish, 375 horsepower and 343 foot pounds of torque. Now let's take a look at see what happened after we started running some boost and all of this was run on E85 as well. We didn't see any change on the NA motor when we added E85. I mean, it wiggled the power around ones and twos here and there, but it does make a difference when we run boost. So here was our first boost level, about eight pounds, made 581 horsepower and 542 foot pounds of torque. And we ran it at a variety of different boost levels. Here's a little bit more boost. Here's a little bit more boost. That was nine and a half pounds. This is like 11 and a half pounds. This was 13.3 or so. So as you can see, it just goes up and up in power as we add more and more boost. Same typical thing, All turbos always do that. So we have the turbo, we've got a good NA motor, we've got the turbo, it's making power. So now what I want to show you are the charge temperatures associated with these different boost levels. Now we can go up and boost because there's a lot more power left in that turbo and the, the 4.8 will definitely take that. But I just wanted to find out if the CO2 is even going to work. And if it does and it's great, then I'm going to jack the boost up. After looking at the power curves offered by the turbo on that 4.8 liter, these are the charge temperatures. See the charge temperatures associated with each of those boost levels. And we'll take a look at these. This is at the eight pound range, and you can see our temperature rose from 67 degrees, 67 and a half, up to 80 or 81 degrees. Now, it's important to note that in this system, we were running an air to water intercooler. We were running dyno water through it that was 65 degrees, and it was the, the temperature inside the dyno cell while we were testing was also 64 to 65 degrees was the starting temperature. So that was the air temperature going into the turbo before it was compressed. So we see a change from 67 degrees up to 80 or 81. That was at eight pounds. So now let's look at the other boost levels. Nine and a half, 
and then 13.3. And as you can see, which is exactly what we would expect, as we go up in boost, we go up in temperature. And unfortunately, my, my second uh, thermocouple was not cooperating, so I wasn't getting good readings for the temperature before the turbo. So what I had to do is put my own type K with a little digital readout and we had to watch that while we were running. And what we saw here was, you can see going up in boost from eight to 13.3 pounds, out here at the top, we see, a, we see a change of about 16 degrees. So going up that five pounds of boost, the temperature change going into the motor was only about 16 degrees, which is good because before the intercooler coming out of the turbo, it was more like 47 or 48 degrees. So it had a pretty big change in temperature from that change in boost, but the intercooler was still doing its job and keeping things cool. And it meant that it had still quite a bit of capacity. Now we have a ton of water flowing through that thing because we have an unlimited source of dyno water. And as I said, it was 65 degrees. So it was keeping things plenty cold. This was working out really well. So now we were excited about installing the CO2. So we had the big bottle hooked up. We were running the lines. Let's find out what happened. This is the power output of our turbocharged 4.8 liter. This was at 13 and a half or 13.3 pounds. And so it's up near 700 horsepower. This is with the air to water intercooler running 65 degree water. So let's take a look and see what happened when we ran. Before we get to the results of the CO2, I need, to, I need to tell you that when we ran this thing, the way that we ran it is I took the lines off of the intercooler core and I hooked up fittings and lines to run the CO2 directly from the bottle into the core. Now, one of the other things I did was I hooked a line up on the exit side of the core and ran a big line and ran it to the back of the dyno cell because the last thing we wanted to do was be uh, ingesting CO2 into the motor because that would definitely affect power. So we ran the line back so that we wouldn't have any problem with that. And, here, and what I did was before I made the run, I would go in and turn the valve on and I tried the valve at a couple of different levels. I basically, I went like full tilt on the valve to, so that we could get as much flow as we could, but here's what happened. Here's the power output. As you can see, it really didn't change much. As a matter of fact, at the top, between 6,000 and 6,500 in that range, it actually lost a little bit of power. Now, we were really concerned about this because <laughs> I was very excited about this. I mean, this was gonna be awesome. I was gonna have negative 120 degree like transfer medium in the intercooler and I thought, man, this is gonna be great. I even preemptively, uh, on the first pass, I preemptively added a bunch of fuel because I knew that this thing was gonna be a lot colder. So I thought, I better throw some fuel at this thing because we're gonna make a ton more power. I had no idea what the change was gonna be. And when we take a look at the charge temperatures in just a sec, you'll, you'll figure out why this happened. But I thought, well, I, I gotta add fuel because we're definitely gonna make a ton of power if we lower the charge temperature down near zero. But guess what? None of that ever happened. So let's take a look at the charge temperatures right now. This is the power output. You can see we didn't change that much. Go to our charge temperature, we're all good there. So that's our charge temperature with the air to water intercooler. And this is our charge temperature with the CO2. So as you can see, I got pretty excited. We started out you know, down near 30 degrees. So when it was down there, I thought, oh, this is gonna be cool. This is a good start. We're definitely gonna see something here. But as you can see, if you look at this curve, it basically just rose, the charge temperature just rose back up to where it was with the air to water intercooler. So, one of two things is going on. Either we don't have enough flow through the core um, or this thing is changing phase inside the core and it's heating up. I mean, there's, I, I'm not really sure. You guys in the conclusion will go over that, but I want you guys to let me know what you think is happening. I just don't think we have enough CO2 going through that core because I see this same kind of thing when we run air, uh, water through our air to water cores. If we don't have enough water flow through the core, we'll start to see a rise in temperature toward the end. And if we increase the water flow, and this is especially the case when we run ice water through the core like we do in some of these big bang motors, when I don't have enough ice water flow through there, which can be a problem if we don't have enough pump, uh, we start to see a rise in temperature at the end. And obviously that's not good. We saw that with the CO2 and I want you guys to let me know. We're gonna go to the conclusion now, but let me know what you guys think. What caused this? Why don't we get a big change? Where's the power at? Okay guys, it's time for what did we learn? So what do we learn? No, seriously, what do we learn? Because obviously I'm not teaching you anything. I mean, the last two tests, the M90 supercharger and now the CO2 intercooler, both of them, boom, shots right to the mad. They're starting to get a little tender. I'm starting to take it personal. 
But seriously, guys, there's got to be some sharp guys out there. What do you think? I mean, what did we do wrong? What did I do wrong? I mean, I thought the CO2 was going to be perfect. Originally, I wanted to run liquid nitrogen, but it's negative 300 degrees. So I wanted to start with something that was a little bit warmer. I was worried about thermal shock in the intercooler, maybe cracking it. So I thought the CO2 was going to be perfect. Now, when we introduced it, we had a full bottle. We introduced it into the core, and on one side of the core, plenty cold. By the time it got over here, it was already warmed up. So what do we need to do? Do I need to put a restrictor on this side? Do we ha not have enough flow? Let me know what you guys think. I'd really like to get that charge temperature down to zero. That's my plan. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and I promise on the next test, I'll have some good results. Thanks for watching.